Hi everyone, this is our channel, Meet the Real Story. Please, like, share and subscribe. I adore my family. I adore our get-togethers, our joking around, our meals, everything. I can't imagine my life without them. But one day, I almost killed them all. No, I'm not insane, I assure you. So don't worry, I'll tell you what happened. My name is Ginger. I'm 18 years old. As you can see, I'm wearing an apron. This is because I love to cook. I like all things kitchen related. My happiest moments are when I see my family eating a meal together. I always cook for them. They enjoy it too. And they support me. They let me try different dishes from different countries. I like to listen to their opinions about my cooking skills. I'm also addicted to cooking programs. One day, my cousin Charlotte came to visit before Thanksgiving Day. She likes to dress all in black. And today was no exception. For some reason, she had called me earlier and asked me if I had ever heard of Thanksgiving's Day curse. I said no, of course. So she told me that the curse applied to large families who ate a big meal together on Thanksgiving. The curse was the result of an evil spirit named Vicky who would possess the cook's body in some family's household and poison the whole family. She said that Vicky used to be a housewife who was a great cook and who loved her family. And yet she poisoned them all during Thanksgiving meal. She watched them die one by one, and then she killed herself as the grand finale. At first, I thought Charlotte was joking and trying to scare me, and I told her that it was nonsense, just an old wife's tale. But she said that every legend was usually based on facts. I paused for a second. That was partly true. I went to my room and searched the internet, and found the same information about the curse that she had relayed to me, which frightened me even more. Vicky was just like me. Or was it the opposite? I stopped myself from getting deeper into this. I needed to focus on preparing the meal. On Thanksgiving's Day, my father bought some groceries, which included a white bottle of liquid. I presumed it to be milk, though it smelled a little weird, but I thought it was my imagination. My aunt called and said she would be arriving a few minutes later, so I had to hurry and finish the meal quickly. My finishing touch was dessert. It was going to be pumpkin candy. I prepared it using the milk that dad bought. After everyone had arrived, I served dinner. We all sat down and prayed before the meal. Then, everyone started eating. Things were going well. Everyone was chatting merrily and complimenting me on the food. I was overjoyed. But somehow, I couldn't shake this feeling that something was wrong. I looked at Charlotte, but she smiled supportively. Suddenly, one by one, the people around the table started clutching their stomachs and groaning in pain. The last thing I remember before I lost consciousness was my brother calling the ambulance. When I woke up later, I was lying in a hospital bed, alongside all my family members, who were also lying in the hospital bed. The doctor came in and reported happily that we would all be fine. Then he looked at me and winked. He also said, Next time, young lady, I suggest not using white paint in your cooking. And that was how I almost killed my loving family. In Legends and Horror Stories Ghosts are typically spirits of the dead, those who suffered greatly in their lives, that when their time comes, they choose to linger in this world, to sow hatred and chaos among the living. Do you believe this, that there are vengeful spirits living among us, right here, right now? I do, and my story will tell you why. I'm Martha. I'm 19 years old, and I have a twin sister, Caroline. She wasn't just my sister, but we were best friends and subsequent partners in crime. We suffered a miserable life because we lived in poverty. Our parents were very poor, despite belonging to a rich family. Grandpa, on my dad's side of the family, worked in the petroleum industry, where he made lots of investments and projects. And fortunately, he had a lot of enemies too, many of whom were from mom's side of the family. Dad was the middle son, but he assumed responsibility for Grandpa's work, because he was very competent and capable. Similarly, Mom became responsible for her father's work. She did her best to avoid conflict between her side of the family and Dad's side, so that they could work together peacefully. It was at this point, I believe, that vengeful spirits must have come into play. My parents had loved each other since their childhood, but they didn't tell their families about it. In the past, both my grandpas were once friends and partners. They worked together within the same company, but they later became enemies and split the company into two. Both families hated each other that day forth. All of them, except for my parents. Mom's uncles took over her company, 
and fired her. Dad couldn't bear to see Mom in this situation, so he told his dad that he was going to marry her. So his father made him choose between my mother and the company with all the power and wealth that came with it. To Grandpa's chagrin, Dad chose Mom over everything else. And so, they got married and lived together with Grandma. They faced life's problems without any support from anyone. Grandpa felt betrayed by Dad and disowned him. Then, Carolyn and I were born. Dad did his best to make us happy and give us everything we needed. Grandma told us about our family's history and how both our parents had been cut off from their families out of sheer greed and betrayal. It felt a bit unfair, but this was our life now. Then, one day, we heard Dad speaking on the phone, with Mom standing beside him, and they were both acting very nervous. He told her to take care of us, and then he left the house and never came back. Mom never told us where he went or why he left. Sometime after that, Grandma passed away. Our situation was getting worse. We thought we had to do something to help Mom. Maybe we were being influenced by those vengeful spirits I mentioned. But either way, Carolyn and I made our decision to go over to the dark side. We decided to steal, rob, defraud. We were smart enough. Together, we could definitely pull it off. We began with our neighbor, very wealthy, but very cheap. We figured she must be keeping her money somewhere in the house, since she didn't believe in leaving a dime in the bank's care and was completely convinced that they would steal her money. Lucky for us, I guess. And we were right. We infiltrated her house when she was away and found a load of money stashed away under a loose tile on the floor. Took some time to find, but we got it. When we got home, the house was completely deserted. Mom wasn't there. Her clothes were all gone from the wardrobe. We were on our own now. We began exploiting jewelry shop owners. We would pretend to be a wealthy customer and tell the owner that we wanted to take the jewelry home to show our mom and get her opinion. We would drug hotel owners and put all the money in their safe into a bag, then scream and call for help, saying that the owner had just collapsed, creating a diversion and disappearing in the crowd. We were getting quite good at it. Our wealth slowly grew day by day. Mom called every now and then to check that we were fine on our own. Of course, she knew nothing about our work or what we were doing to survive. Our ultimate goal was to earn a lot of money and run away to another country to start a new life. One evening, I was with my friends and I met a guy named Craig. He was rich, but somehow seemed different than all the people we robbed. Later, I found out to my surprise, that he was our cousin, the grandson of the man that had taken everything away from my mother and fired her. Unsure of what to do, I told Carolyn what I knew. She went ecstatic. She told me that this was our chance to take back everything, the company, the money that belonged to us. But for the first time, we didn't quite agree. Craig was nothing like his father. He wasn't greedy. He was kind and gentle. He often told me that money was a curse if it meant living alone away from people that we care about and cherish. I made up my mind, and I told Carolyn that I couldn't be a part of our evil scheming anymore, and I wanted out, and so I left her and went to live on my own. At this point, I had no idea what Carolyn was up to. In the meantime, Craig was negotiating a deal that would earn his company a lot of profit. He told me to come visit at the company, and then we would go out for dinner. I accepted happily. When I arrived at his company... I sensed someone behind me. Then, suddenly a hand pressed a handkerchief over my mouth, and I passed out. When I woke up, I found Craig unconscious beside me. To the side, I could see his safe was wide open. Papers were scattered everywhere, and in my hand was the key to the safe. Then the police arrived, found the safe key in my hand, and accused me of being a thief. I told them that I had been drugged unconscious, just like Craig. The police officer looked inside my bag and found a bottle of chloroform. I was shocked, to say the least. I couldn't understand what had happened. They took me downstairs and tried to wake up Craig. At about that time, a woman in a black wig came over to me and said, Martha, you betrayed me. It was Carolyn. I couldn't believe that she framed me. Then she left. Her betrayal hurt me deeply. A part of my brain told me, that I had betrayed her first, but that doesn't matter now. When I get out of prison, someday, I resolve to get my revenge on her. We were no longer sisters.
just as we had been betrayed by our families before us, we were now locked into yet another circle of family betrayal. Only it was more personal and closer to home this time. Were they truly vengeful spirits influencing us? I think so. What about you? Hi there. I am Matilda, and I'm 24 years old. My story starts just before Thanksgiving, when I decided to visit and spend a few days with my grandparents. Their house was in an old neighborhood, near a graveyard, that people only whispered about in small circles. But I wasn't interested in all the rumors. I like to visit graveyards, to enjoy their peaceful landscapes and time-honored history. I was always welcome at my grandparents' house. My granny prepared me the chocolate drink I like. Grandpa baked me the biscuits with his magic recipe. We spent all day talking, laughing, and playing. My father was an archaeologist. He was crazy about antiques, so he had a room like a small museum. He collected a lot of things that were rare in that room. We used to sit in this room, and my grandfather would tell me stories about every antique, except for one painting of an old woman. I used to ask him about it, but he never told me what it was. As I was sleeping in the room, which was next to our little museum, I heard whispering. I opened the door and looked around. It was coming from my father's museum. I searched around the room to find out the source of the voice. I couldn't believe it. The eyes and mouth in the old painting were moving, and I heard there's danger in the backyard. I ran, frightened, to my grandparents' room. My grandfather asked me what happened, and I told him. I thought he would mock me, but he brought his gun and went quickly to the backyard. He told me if he didn't return within fifteen minutes, I should call the police. Suddenly, I heard shots. I thought that something bad happened to my grandfather, but he entered the house and told us that the thieves ran away. They still wouldn't tell me about the painting, but I don't think I needed an explanation anymore.